coming back out. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, so good morning. I'm Bob Euler, minister here at the Unity of the Hill Country, where we have a positive path for spiritual living. 100 years ago, 1924, the month of July, a Unity minister in Kansas City there had this idea. Someone had said, you know, it would be nice to have a prayer, a new prayer to say every day, and maybe a Bible verse with it. And that's how we started the Daily Word. So it's been going 100 years Jack, will you come up here and read the Daily Word? Thank you. The Daily Word is divine order. During times of uncertainty, I trust divine order. Can we repeat that with me? During uh, times of uncertainty, I trust divine order. How often I have felt disappointed when something did not work out or as I had planned or hoped only to discover the blessing that I had not anticipated. Understanding that it seems seemingly uh, obstacle may actually be an unrecognized opportunity. I used to have a boss that said, we don't have any problems, we have opportunities <laughs> to solve. <laughs> I resist the temptation to wonder why and setback is happening. Instead, I pray, asking, what is mine to do? I have received guidance to wait for a better time to pursue my plan, or perhaps an insight will arise out of which what I appear to be a failure to show me, the way forward that I will accomplish even better or greater goods. Affirming divine order keeps me patient and trusting in the right outcomes in all situations. In 1 Corinthians 13, 12, it says, For now we see a mirror dimly, but then we s will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully, I have been fully known. Uh, let's repeat the affirmation. During times of uncertainty, I trust divine order. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Unity Movement was started 1889 with answered prayer. Myrtle Fillmore was healed of her tuberculosis. We'll be honored to pray with you. You can request prayer at b.unity.org at our world headquarters. Or you can jump on our website, unityhillcountry.org, request a prayer there. Or we have a prayer box for those of you who actually still write things down on paper and put them <laughs> in the box. And we will pray over those, and then we send it back to the 24-7 prayer room there at Unity Village, where there's always somebody praying for 30 days on what it has been sent in. Um, and for the... <laughs> Just a quick note for those of you who are familiar with it, during the pandemic, uh, Silent Unity, the 24-7 prayer line, you know, f ended up closing down like from midnight until 5 a.m. And here I was just at the convention, you know, a few weeks ago and toured, and, and they said, we're back up and running 24-7 now. You can always, you know, call in, email, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a vision and mission statement. Let's go ahead and say th them together to live consciously, celebrating the divine potential in all. And then Unity's statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good omnipotent. Uh, well, for those watching online who we actually live stream on Facebook, record it and then post it on YouTube. Last Sunday was the perfect storm of technical difficulties, <laughs> so we did not broadcast on Facebook. However, if you do go onto our webpage, you know, unityhillcountry.org, and scroll down, you can see a version of the Sunday lesson that we did last week. So if you want to catch up on things, but we're actually launching, you know, this whole series on the book um, E Squared. And it does seem like there's a lot going on, uh, and there he is. 
Um, Melinda, our music director, uh, needed to take a sudden medical leave of absence, so she's going to be out probably until mid-August, but she'll keep us posted and all of that. So that's why we're using recorded music today, and you know we've reached out to some of the musicians in the area, who, and we're actually having David Rosenblatt in uh, you know next week. Uh, it was just a matter of fi finding people who weren't already booked somewhere else. So, uh, so he will be here. And I know many of you are going through stuff. I know we were just talking, uh, you know, before the service about you know how many people have had various issues that have been up for them, and uh, <laughs> indeed for me too. I'm gonna, I, I'm going to invite somebody who'd be willing to step forward and and go on a road trip with me. I need to have a, a surgical procedure in Austin on Wednesday, the 24th, was it the 25th? But that Wednesday. And of course, I have to be there at 5:30 in the morning. So, uh, so I'm looking for somebody to be willing to drive me over there, stay in a hotel for the night, drive me there, and then come back about three hours later after uh, after I've had my surgical procedure. Um, <coughs> so, I wanted to address uh, the shooting yesterday. Our minds are very good at trying to figure out a mystery. Our minds are also very good at finding meaning in something. Um, so it is very easy, and even I yesterday was you know, guilty of speculating about what happened and why it happened and whose fault it is, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, ah, let it go. If you're going to approach it spiritually, recognize that these events that surface in our life are an opportunity for us to define what we believe and who we are. So when this happened yesterday, okay, do I identify with this? If so, how? And is it me or is it not me? Is this me or is this not me? And that's the main thing is just we, you know, we are constantly building this belief system, this, uh, these basic assumptions about life. So I do want to encourage you because, you know, as I've said a few times, um, there are these two hemispheres, you know, love and fear. Uh, and when we're over here in fear, we make irrational decisions. You know, so... I find myself often asking myself, am I coming from love on this situation or on fear? You know, so as <laughs> we go through, you know, the coming weeks and having been <laughs> having been a former radio TV journalist for 17 years, you know, I know yesterday it's kind of like, we're not going to know what happened here for weeks at the very least, you know. I mean, it's just the last 10 years that we've gotten some definitive answers on, you know, who killed John F. Kennedy and why, you know. So just recognize our filters. It's like, okay, this comes through. I see this. This is what it means to me, and that's fine. But spiritually, how is it defining you? All right. Now, speaking of coming from love or fear, <laughs> we got, about a week ago, the city water department visited us. You know, they, of course, you know, like probably like you and me, they, take a meter reading every month. And they came in with great concern because since last month's reading, you know, at the beginning of June, all of a sudden our water usage jumped. It was like <laughs> one gallon a minute, you know, was going. And of course with the various <sighs> water restrictions, it's kind of like, uh, so we had Holloway Plumbing out here. They checked everything out and sure enough, we've got a break in the water line going out to the street there, the main water line coming into the building. So we're going to have to have that repaired. Uh, latest tally on it is going to be about $4,900. What I encourage you to do, as I do often, is like, okay, if you feel moved to give, that's fine. But the main thing is I need you, or I would like you, to join me in just the prayer consciousness of building the prosperity consciousness. It's like, okay, let's see that starting today and continuing onward, whatever expenses come up for unity of the hill country, revenues are always going to be higher. 
and there's nothing wrong with it coming through an unexpected uh, circumstances. What a coincidence. How did God know I prayed? <laughs> so, so that's what's going on uh, here. So, uh, like I said, just a lot to cover. Uh, so, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and prepare for meditation. We've got another one of Daniel Nabed's songs. I know we use, I know Melinda was using some of his songs and like, but get ready, my soul. So let's prepare for meditation and prayer. Uh, and just allow Daniel's word to speak to us. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love. To the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready My soul Everything I've ever done Everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To the present moment here To a new beginning here And I'm seeing life so clear Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind. To the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready My soul Cause here I go Close your eyes, 
get into a meditative state, go deeper, deeper to that very center of the spiritual being having the human experience. Allow any illusion of separation between ourselves and God to just melt away. We know we trust. Get in touch with God as you know God to be. We are open and receptive to God's living spirit of truth. And now let's take some time to pray. And in unity, when we do take time to pray, we include some time to pray for others. Bring to mind any individuals, any groups, any situations, circumstances that you'd like to pray for now. We'll include all of the prayer requests received here at unityhillcountry.org. And without knowing the specifics, we send out that prayerful energy. We see and know that the divine substance, the divine potential, and yes, the divine perfection are in and expressing through each of these requests as wholeness as wholeness and their highest good continually unfolding. We also pray that unity of the hill country is thriving in consciousness, people, and revenues today and every day hereafter. Our revenues are always more than our expenses from this day forward. The God presence as unity of the hill country is a divine magnet attracting anyone who can benefit from who we are and what we are about. Attracting health, prosperity, love, and joy to unity of the hill country and all who are guided here today and every day hereafter. I now invite you to take the words I'm about to speak as your own words in prayer this morning. There is an infinite field of possibilities, an invisible energy force. Some people call it God. But what I choose to know is that I can impact this field and draw from it according to my beliefs and my expectations. My connection to this field provides accurate, unlimited guidance. The universe is limitless, abundant, and accommodating. As I prepare for two minutes of silence, I embrace and express this divine idea of faith in the silence.
thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the Gospel of John, <coughs> 14th chapter, Jesus is teaching his followers, channeling the divine presence, and he says, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in this Christ consciousness will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. In my way of doing things, if you ask me for anything, I will do it. And for my ever-growing realization of this field of infinite possibilities, and the awareness of the omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence of this energy we call God, I am grateful. I pray these things in the name and the nature and the power that we know is symbolized by Jesus Christ. And as we release these prayers, knowing perfect results are unfolding, and draw our focus back to the sanctuary, I'll read the invocation by Myrtle Fillmore's husband, Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity. We are now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. And by divine wisdom now erase our mortal limitations. And from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. Amen. Let's sing the Alleluia chant together. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Okay, we'll start with a virtual hug. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, you know, I wasn't even aware that this was happening until last week, but it turns out NASA had set up a simulator, as they're calling it, the, the Mars simulator, where it's basically... A, a replica or realization of what Mars is probably going to be like. And if we're going to send astronauts there and have them there for a while, you know, let's see if we can learn from practicing. And so they got four volunteers who are willing to go into this thing for a year. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, just on July 6th here, uh, this Mars simulator, after 378 days, these four people, you know, emerged from the simulator, and they're going to do this several times with four volunteers. Um, <clears throat> you had the limited provisions that people would have had, you know, if they're on Mars. Um, I know I often think of that movie, The Martian, that was, you know, out a few years ago about, with, uh, you know, Matt Damon, you know, which drew a lot on the latest research. But, and also just the fact that sending a signal to and from Earth to Mars takes 22 minutes to get there. <laughs> so they were even simulating that if they wanted to communicate with each other. That it would take 22 minutes for the signal to get back to Earth. Um, so a lot of what we know about Mars is from the, the Mars rovers, uh, you know, these, these multi-wheeled things that are driven by solar panels. 
Um, you know, and it made a guest appearance in that movie, The Martian. Um, I didn't realize this, but there have been four Mars rovers. Uh, the first one was named Rover, and then, uh, I'm sorry, there was Sojourner, and then Spirit and Opportunity. And <laughs> I remember back in 2019, them talking about this one named Opportunity. It, was, it landed up there in 2004. They had programmed it and planned a 90-day mission for it. You know, take the soil samples and all, gather as much data as they could. At the end of the 90 days, it was still worrying along, so they kept sending new signals, new experiments. 15 years that thing was going. And some people wonder if it would still be going if indeed this dust storm came through and covered up all of the solar panels so that it couldn't recharge its battery. But there is still, you know, the fourth one going along is, in fact, it landed on August 5th, 2013, and then the name of it is Curiosity. And this aspect, like I talked about, our minds want curiosity. I, I want to solve this mystery. I want to find the meaning in this situation. The curiosity. And it turns out, like so many of these things <laughs> these days, they, they held a contest of what to name the Mars rover. And they did it with, you know, grammar school children. And so this 11-year-old girl, Clara, suggested curiosity. And her winning essay was in part this. Curiosity is an everlasting flame that burns in everyone's mind. It makes me get out of bed in the morning, wonder what surprises life will throw at me today, like a, walk, a broken water main. <laughs> Curiosity is such a powerful force. Without it, we wouldn't be who we are today. When I was younger, I wondered, why is the sky blue? Why do the stars twinkle? Why am I Clara? And I still ask these questions today. Curiosity is the passion that drives us through our everyday lives. Sure, there are many risks and dangers, but despite that, we still continue to wonder and dream and create and hope. My God, this 11-year-old writes better than I do. <laughs> but that curiosity, you know, and you know, I hear so many forms in, in spiritual paths of like, I want to take a closer walk with God. And then of course, in unity, hey, you're already a part of God. You know, so, but the curiosity keeps, okay, what am I going to do with my special spiritual gifts, passions, and talents? You know. What is my part to do in making this world a better place? And don't sell yourself short. If you know you need to do it, do it. We've been waiting for you. Now, I you know I'm going to put up the, the cover of the book. So we're using this book, E Squared. And I chose it for the summer because this book is great for people who are new to Unity. And of course, those of us who've been here a while or in Unity a while, can find it fun too. Brian Grout is an author and screenwriter who lives in Lawrence, Kansas, in about 30 miles west of Kansas City, where the University of Kansas is located. And she came up with this idea. She went to Unity. And she came up with this idea of like, when, especially when she heard, you know, Charles Fillmore, especially was like, you know, we need to scientifically prove these things. You know, some people are like, yeah, I'll just go on faith. But it's like, well, what if? And so she came up with these nine experiments that we'll be doing over the summer. So even if someone, so like say someone wants to come on a Sunday, we'll just talk about the experiment for that week. Or, we'll, or if you just want to give the person the book, I, I found an extra copy I, I, that I've got in the office if you, want to, if you want to stop by there and make a donation about it. But the cover notes <laughs> on the back of this with, Author Pam Grout, the publisher, writes, E squared could be described as a lab manual with simple experiments that prove reality is malleable. Consciousness can trump matter, and the shape of your life can be shaped with your mind. The nine experiences, each of which can be conducted with no money, very little time, demonstrate that spiritual principles are as dependable as gravity, as constant 
as Newton's laws of motion. Rather than take it on faith, like I say, let's, maybe we can prove it. And let's go ahead and put up the next slide there, Brad. Um, these are the things that she points out early in the book. It's like, okay, here's what we're going to attempt to do. And I find the vast majority of people actually do it. There's an invisible energy force or field of infinite possibilities. And so she starts referring to this as the FP. You, know. you impact the field and draw from it according to your beliefs and expectations. Your connection to the field provides accurate and limited, or I'm sorry, unlimited guidance. The universe is limitless, abundant, and strangely accommodating. Intuitive consultant Alan Bridges wrote a book review, and he said, what E squared is really about is learning to suspend the beliefs that have been drummed into our minds for so many years. Things like, there's not enough to go around. Not true. We don't deserve to be happy. Not true. Having what we want is greedy. Not true. Oh, I wouldn't want to pursue this pipe dream. Why? It's about unplugging from beliefs based on scarcity and training our minds to focus on what we want rather than what we don't want, as opposed to worrying about or focusing on what we don't want. In uh, the Christian Testament, first book, Gospel of Matthew, <clears throat> Jesus has this Sermon on the Mount, as it's known, the, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh chapter of Matthew. And people have noticed it seems to kind of like just be this compilation of some of the various points that he teaches. And so when you get to the sixth chapter, 22nd verse, it says, The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is not single, your whole body will be full of darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and the mammon. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Now, over the years, I know, you know, especially growing up as a kid, I heard mammon was money. But when you look at some of the origins of these, you know, and other meanings of these words, it actually means more attach attachments to materiality. You know, hoarding and piling up the things that we think we want in life. And they can be very useful to us at one point, but then years later, eh, time to time to move that energy along, to just donate it. So this field of possibilities, and I know someone before the service was saying, I, really, I like that, you know, that, that idea of, uh, you know, a name for God. So this invisible energy field is 100% reliable. Yes, it works every time. And just like math or the law of physics, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, hey, when you think about it, all life is an experiment. And I found that the more experiments I make, the better. So using this scientific method, on page 23, <coughs> Pam writes, according to the Webster Dictionary, science is knowledge attained through study or practice. It usually starts with a theory. A theory is a conceptual framework that explains existing observations and predicts new ones. A theory is accepted on the results obtained through observation and or experiments that anyone can reproduce. And so this was Charles Fillmore's thing. It's like, well, okay, if I pray a specific thing and get a specific outcome, I should be able to do it again. You know, proving that, yeah, okay, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, but the, we're kind of that conduit, allowing you know, this energy. We, we're co-creators with God, as we say so often in unity. <coughs> Author Chris Beatty also wrote a review of this book, and he said, you're doing this because you are fantastic, brave, curious, and yes, you're probably a little crazy. 
and that's a good thing. And of course, one of the nicknames we use in Unity is the Unity's followers are Unitics. <coughs> so, are you willing to prove your basic assumptions or past experiences wrong? Now, the dude abides <laughs> experiment is she bases on the movie The Big Lebowski, which was out in 1998. Now, this is the Coen brothers, you know, Ethan and Joel Coen, and they come up with all of these quirky movies and farces, you know, of course, Fargo won Picture of the Year. Uh, but, you know, they got old <laughs> stuff like Raising Arizona, uh, Oh God, Where Art Thou, you know, and then, of course, this one, The Big Lebowski. And so they'll get an idea, they'll write it, work on a, you know, on a screenplay. And they said there was this guy in Hollywood <clears throat> who looked like this. <laughs> um, he's everywhere. He says, you go to a party, he's there. Everybody calls him the dude. They knew that his last name was Lebowski, because nobody could figure out what he does and why he's at all of these various things. But wherever you'd go, there was Lebowski, the dude. And near the end, you know, and he'll spout these platitudes which don't really seem to make any sense, but the one guy points out, you know, the dude abides. The dude is everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, this God presence is everywhere. And on page uh, 32, Pam works on these various misperceptions or basic assumptions that we need to let go of. Eight whoppers, as she puts it. God is, you know, this bearded guy. God sits on a cloud. God punishes us when we do something. No, no, God doesn't have to punish us. We do such a better job of it ourselves, you know, according to our beliefs and perceptions. So this experiment will prove to you once and for all that there is a loving, abundant, and totally hip force in the universe. Some people call it God. Some people call it prana. Some people call it the one. Some people call it all there is. It doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it Cosmo Kramer. It doesn't matter. Use whatever name works for you. What's God as we know God to be? So to do this experiment properly, as we talked about last week, we need to start by willing to set aside any skepticism. We have such an amazing, powerful mind as co-creators. If we decide that these don't work, they won't, <laughs> at least in our own experience. So they said, you know, let go. Set aside your skepticism. Uh, these experiments, most of them are just maybe 48 hours. There's one coming up next month that'll be, uh, that you'll need to pray like every week, and we'll get into that when we get there. <clears throat> but curiosity. Be curious enough to expect God is showing up in living color. Expect it with your whole heart. Expect it with every ounce of your soul. Keep a notebook or a journal. Jot down the time you launch each experiment. Most of them, like I said, are 48 hours. But monitor your thoughts and feelings. Because as I've shared, when we put out an energy or start to move forward with our guidance, Anything within our basic assumptions or belief system is going to surface in our mind. <gasps> oh, I'm experiencing resistance. I think I'll stop now. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to let go of that basic assumption and move forward. Now, she points out that what we need to do is let go of the old BS. Let go of the old BS. And by BS, she means belief system. Now, the first time I did this was in 1986. My life had turned to crap. Uh, I was going through a divorce with my first wife. I was suicidal. I would not discover unity for, for like another couple of years. And suddenly, you know, I was kind of like, you know, just shaking my fist at a God that's outside of me. It's like, why shouldn't I commit suicide? What's the point sort of a thing? And all of a sudden, these memories, these visions came to me. And I interpreted them and found meaning as 
God was answering my prayers. Now let me show you a slide of a car. This is a Datsun 1977 B210. As George Carlin would call it, the all-American piece of, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it, um, at the time, 1977, I mentioned, you know, my first wife that I was getting divorced from, her dad decided he wanted her to have a new car. So he bought the cheapest car that was available in the United States at the time. $4,900, he bought this Datsun B210. You know, as you tell, can tell I'm a car aficionado, it's like, oh my God. But it's like, okay, this is what we got to work with. He had made an amazing 68 horsepower. It weighed just a smidgen under 2,000 pounds. And was one of the more frustrating cars to work on as a do-it-yourselfer. But I'm not going to get off on all of those wonderful details. So, um, and I had three incidents that came to mind. The first one is I was driving this car <laughs> from, from Kansas City down to Wichita, Kansas, about a three-hour drive. <clears throat> Interstate 35, and it, is, it had been snowing, it was sleeting, everything was slick, uh, you know, and, and of course, you know, this, the semis all kind of slowed down. So I'm behind this one semi and said, okay, I want to pass. And now, if you've ever passed a semi during a rainstorm, you know, it's like suddenly you're in this cloud <laughs> precipitation where it's hard to see. So I'm just you know, gunning the engine on this thing and all of a sudden it's like the car lo loses total touch with the road and then slides into the median. Now luckily, you know, it was one of these grass medians with just a little bit of an indentation, but I found that the car was sailing along because it was sailing along on, you know, the icy slush that was in the center. So I gathered my thoughts and feelings and you know, pulled the car back onto the shoulder of the road <laughs> until I could take a nice deep breath again. It's like, ah, that was one incident. The other one, I was driving from Peoria up to Chicago, Interstate 55. First trip in this car on that. And I found the exit where I was supposed to exit and I'm tooling along at, oh, 55. <laughs> and, and suddenly, I'm seeing that the ramp that I'm pulling off on is one of these, you know, clover leaves. And it's 25 miles an hour. And it just starts to rain. Now, if you have been on the highway when it starts to rain, we notice, one, there's kind of an oily film on the road. There's also all of the rubber particles from the tires. You know, they all kind of get washed away over for about 10 minutes but when it first starts to rain. So here I am pulling off 25 miles an hour. Okay, so I start to apply the brake and nothing's happening. And all of a sudden the car starts to slide sideways and I'm looking out the driver window and I'm looking at this huge concrete base for this light pole. And I'm like, oh, what a wonderful opportunity I have here. <laughs> no, I didn't, didn't think that. But it's like, oh God. I... So I just took a deep breath and said, you know, you know, uh, oh God. And all of a sudden, the car swerved. You know, I had, I had the wheel turned to the left, but nothing seemed to be happening until just as I was getting to the concrete base, and then suddenly I was back on the road. Third incident, I was in rural Illinois, and there was this three railroad tracks. And I think I've shared this story before. But it's one of those ones where you, you know, you got to pull up onto like a little bit of hill and then go down. So I pull up onto this, these railroad tracks and the car dies. You know, suddenly it just kind of stalls. <sighs> suddenly the, you know, the signal starts going. And I look and I see, oh, sure enough, there's a train on the one track that I'm not even on because it's kind of like, you know, over the third track. And I'm looking at this and this, it's a passenger train. Coming. So, uh, okay, no problem. But I just got this intuitive feeling of like, no, open the door and push the car off the tracks. And so I did that. You know, and as I glided down the other side of the hill, it turns out there's a freight train coming the other way on that track. And then I maybe escaped it by you know, less than five seconds, but it was kind of like this feeling was you think you're safe, you think you had nothing to worry about. Hey, 
do something about it. So these are the seeds that come back to me when I'm saying to God, <laughs> why shouldn't I commit suicide? And what I, the meaning I took from it was like, you don't even know the things I have planned for you for the rest of your life. So we're going to put this first experiment to, to work. On uh, page 40 of the book, E Squared, she lays this all out. You're going to get in touch with God as you know God to be, the FP, like we say, the field of infinite possibilities. Work with this. If you don't think you've got an answer after 48 hours, it's okay. You know, just don't worry about it. This is the first experiment. So the first thing you're going to do is to ask God or ask this FP to make its presence known to you. Ask for an unspecified blessing. We'll get to the specifics here in a few weeks. But the first thing is like make whatever it is, a symbol or whatever, how does God prove to you that God exists? You know, um, so the hypothesis is if there is indeed this 24-7 energy force equally available to every person, I can access it any time by simply focusing on it and paying attention. Furthermore, if I ask the force for a blessing, giving it a specific time frame and clear instructions, it'll send me a gift and say, my pleasure. So 48 hours of it. If you want to start now, that would be, you know, what, noon on Tuesday? You know, but if you want to wait a few hours, hey, to each his own. <laughs> and Pam, the author, writes as if she's talking to God. So, okay, God, I'm giving you exactly 48 hours to make your presence known. I want a very clear thumbs-up sign or something that I cannot possibly write off as a coincidence. This is your mission if you decide to accept it. I have a, a quick video from Steve Hartman of the CBS Evening News. A man's purpose should be to serve the living God. Although no one knew it at the time, Minister Jerome Jones of the Springfield Baptist Church in Monticello, Georgia, recently went through a crisis of faith. I was getting ready to stop coming to church so much as, as I did. The minister? Yeah. I didn't see God doing anything for me. So given all that, this thing comes and basically lands in your lap. Lo and behold, <laughs> here God shows up. Jerome says last month, he was at his day job with the power company when a note came down from the heavens. It was attached to three balloons, and it read, God, help me go to college. Please help me get everything I need to leave Wednesday. Signed, Mykia Curry. Mykia was about to start her freshman year at Albany State University in Albany, Georgia. No one in her family had ever gone to college, which is why she sent up that prayer, scared and worried. Scared, because this is my first time being away from home and worried like, as in financially. Your family has no money? Not really, no. So that's why I decided to come to college so my little brother won't have to go through the same thing I did. Mykia hopes to become a nurse to provide both an example and a better life for her brother Malik. She got a student loan, but didn't have money for other necessities, like a fridge for her room or even a comforter for her bed. She needed help. Unfortunately, the wind blew her balloons to just about the poorest preacher in central Georgia. I don't have any money in my savings account. I, I drained it from the taxes on my mom's house. I said, now you see this, right? Did you say that out loud? <laughs> I said it out loud because I, this, this is where I talk to God. We got away with each other. You may have a way with each other, but he doesn't understand your finances. No, nah, nah, he showed that. He, evidently, he did. Yeah. When he found that balloon message, <laughs> Jerome says he had a total of $125 to his name. How much did you spend on her? I spent all of it on her. He delivered a comforter and a mini fridge. And most importantly, a ton of much needed inspiration. It encourages me to keep going, knowing that prayers are answered. Likewise, Jerome also has renewed faith. A good reminder that sometimes the best way to get your prayers answered 
is to answer someone else's. Steve Hartman, on the road in Monticello, Georgia. Closing Bible passage is going to be from Christian Testament Gospel of John, fourth chapter. At the city of Capernaum, there was an official whose son was ill. He went to Jesus and begged Jesus to come heal his dying son. Jesus said to him, unless you are willing to see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Jesus said to him, so go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus had spoken to him and went back home. May you always be open to God's guidance and grace. Ah, so, it is, uh, if you want to hold on a sec. I'm forgetting <coughs> the first timers. <laughs> Someone's here for the, the first time. What's that? Oh, that's right. Well, I was going to do that a little bit later, but that's cool. Um, announcements. Like I said, we got this book, E Squared, by Pam Grout, your favorite bookseller, whatever. We got an extra copy in the office. Uh, like I said, as I mentioned, we do tape. Uh, we do live stream on Facebook and uh, do the uh, YouTube. So, on, like I say, just go to the home page of the website and you'll find last month. Now, next Sunday is our abundance potluck. Uh, so, bring food to share. We've got some sign up sheets out there on the table if you just want to scribble down what you're bringing so we don't end up with, with uh, let's say, 10 jello salads. Uh, so, yeah. And, um, as I mentioned, if someone wants to take a road trip with me, two-day road trip here, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 23rd and the 24th, uh, just contact me here at the church minister at yodadhillcountry.org, and we'll, we'll figure something out. We have a care team. It's here to help. Just let us know. Uh, it's astounding to me how often people, the last people they think of getting in touch with is, is their church or Unity, you know, Unity Spiritual Center. As you notice, probably when you came in the door, we got the table there, food and kitty litter drive ends at the end of July. We've been taking it uh, over there just about every day as we get stuff, or every week, I should say. But, and then, as I said, continue prayer that our revenues always exceed expenses. And it is summer, so we love it if you'd sign up for monthly or weekly giving on that thing. Now, <clears throat> If you're here for the first time, we're glad that you are here. Hope that you're finding a place of like-minded people, a place to belong. We teach spiritual tools that can help you, regardless of what's going on. If you're interested in a welcome packet, and I'm sure can bring you one if you raise your hand now, or otherwise you can grab one on the way out. But we're not going to ask you to say anything. <laughs> just, uh, just go ahead and give you the packet, sure. Yeah, I know I had a chance to talk to you a little bit beforehand, so just moved here from Kerrville, but went to Unity Church where she's from. So, Okay, we have an opportunity to support our spiritual cooperative. If you would like to donate by credit card, you can go to the website, unityhillcountry.org, and click on Donate, or you can scan the QR code. Please consider setting up automatic monthly or weekly. I already said that. If you prefer to mail us a check, hey, just 1016 Jefferson Street, Kerrville, Texas. So, hold what it is that you are going to give. And let's truly send loving, prospering energy into what it is we're giving. We have an affirmation up on the screen. And so let's say that one together, beginning with the words divine love. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I give, all that I receive. I send it forth with my blessings and my love. Okay, now we have released this 
financial energy, this substance into the world. So we open our hearts in gratitude and we send these gifts forward through our congregation out into our world, a ripple of prosperity consciousness touching all that it affects. Amen. You can take your bulletin with you so you got information about what's going on. We've got information out on the tables too. So um, we've reached the end of our gathering. If you're willing and able, if you'll stand, we'll circle up, join hands, we'll do the peace song and the prayer for protection.